I know, you're excited. So am I. It's time for an update on a slow moving project about a slow moving car. Enjoy. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less and go faster. So yes, it's time for an update on Project Rally 36, the project where I'm slowly turning a bog standard BMW E36 compact into a Clubman rally car. And yes, the project's going slowly. In fact, pretty much the only thing slower than the project is the car itself, as we found out at the rolling road in the last episode, where the car's 20 horsepower down on standard. And trust me, it does not have those 20 to spare. But before we go chasing off after a load of horses that have escaped, we've got a few shiny bits left to fit. The quick rack, the uprated brakes. We might go and get a few new shiny bits. And plus, we've got the spotlights to try and get this thing ready for its first proper event. But before we do that, we've got to fix a few things first. So since the last episode, I did a bit of driving around, not a huge amount and nothing particularly adventurous, but I started hearing a small knocking noise coming from the back and it had that kind of high frequency knock when we went over any bumps that just sounded like top mount to me. So I got underneath the car and took off the suspension that I'd just put on and found this. So I bought these dampers 10 years ago and they never made it onto my old car, but they had been stored out of the light and away from any heat. So I thought they'd be, you know, good to go. But it looks like the polyurethane bushes to sandwich the top mount plate have just completely rotted. They've gone rock solid and brittle as you like. Fortunately, the bottom mounts seem to be in really good condition. Yet they are made from the same material, stored in exactly the same way. I do not understand. If you can explain it, please answer us in the comments. But I'm not gonna to waste too much time thinking about why these are good. I'm simply gonna crack on with replacing these. So now I need four bushes. So I suppose I could buy them, but you know, 3D printers, I'll just make some. Previously on this channel, I have 3D printed a mold and then cast the bushes out of two-part polyurethane to about 80-85 Shore A hardness. However, I've got some of this TPU 95A Bamba Lab filament for the X1C. So, screw it. I'll just print them directly. And there was a bit of stringing. Probably I could have left the filament to dry out for a bit longer. But as you can see, they are firm and hard with a little bit of compliance. And they have very, very few air bubbles, if any at all. So we're gonna throw them on the car and find out how they go. Now this was done quite a few months ago and the car is still going strong now. So I'm gonna give it a few more months and then I'll whip them off and see how they're faring. But so far, all good. So now we've fixed the problems that we made in the last episode, we can crack on and actually improve the car again. So next job, steering. So this is the steering rack from a bog standard Z3 from the late 90s. Remember the Z3? It was like the MX-5, but heavier and not quite as good. But it did come with a rather lovely 2.7 turn lock to lock steering rack. And because the underpinnings of the Z3 are identical pretty much to the compact, I can just bolt the steering rack straight up. So it makes a really quick and easy replacement for the 3.5 lumberingly slow turns lock to lock steering rack that's already on the car. Coupled with the steering wheel that's about the like about like this wide, the car originally felt dead. So this should make a really big improvement. The steering rack, like the rear suspension, were parts that I bought that never made their way onto the last car I had. So yeah, do they work, don't they work? Well, <laughs> let's find out. So first job was to remove the old steering rack. A simple enough job, only complicated by the fact that the car has never come to bits. And this is probably the first time the steering rack has ever been removed. 
So the biggest problem here is just tight and rusted up fasteners. Now, because the Z3 steering rack was so old, I didn't trust the rod ends on it and the rod ends that are on the car look pretty good. So I just wanted to swap them over, but I could not get the old rod ends off the Z3 rack. I tried a spanner, a bigger spanner, a hammer, foul language and a blowtorch. Nothing worked. So I kind of had to bite the bullet and just bought whole new steering arm assemblies that bolt to the end of the steering rack. Uh, new parts on a rally car is probably not a bad thing. Hey, it's only money. So once I dispensed with all the problematic parts, it all went together fairly simple and, you know, made a good difference to how it drove. But, you know, in terms of competition, in terms of really quick racks, 2.7 isn't really the fastest. And anyway, the steering wheel's still about this wide. Something had to be done. So off I went to Demon Tweaks to go and have a look at their selection of steering wheels. Now that's quite a tactile thing, a steering wheel, how it feels in your hand, how the cutouts feel, the profile of it, all makes a big difference. So I wanted to go and try them on for size. So I went to Demon Tweaks because they've got the showroom and I was able to have a look and try. And in between being distracted by some very pretty models in the showroom, I decided on this, a 330 mil diameter OMP Targa steering wheel. So then we had to fit it and I'd already bought a steering boss kit when I first bought the car about a year ago. So it was fairly simple to unplug the airbag and take all the steering wheel off. And whilst I did get a horn push with the new steering wheel, the BMW one required the clock spring and two wires and the boss kit that I'd bought only had a commutator ring for one. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Let's just put it on and drive it. So with the wheel on, it feels almost comically small, but 2.7 turns lock to lock, it still isn't that fast a ratio for a proper quick rack. And it actually works quite well with the steering rack to give a nice amount of weight to the steering. Right then, it's another job off the list. Next. So the standard brakes are pretty good. They're ventilated and they just about fit under the 15 inch wheel. So unless I go to bigger wheels, I'm not getting much bigger brakes in there. But the pads, well, yeah, the pads have got one or two decent stops in them and that's it, they're cooked. They need to cool down. Good for shopping trips only, I think. So the pads have got to come out and I've got some new discs that have got cross drills in them. And whilst these wouldn't be my first choice, because the cross drills can often be the start point for cracks. Well, they're brand new and they're in better condition than the ones that are on it. So I'm going to swap them out whilst we're there. So out come the new pads and these are for Rodo DS 2500s, which are basically your fast road pads. So about right for this kind of lightweight car with not all the power in the world. And even better, they come with stickers. Now I'm not going to bother doing the fluid at the moment because I'm going to want to change the flexibles to steel braided hoses and I'm also going to want to move the hard lines inside the car to protect them from rough ground. So all the fluids are going to have to be changed in the future so I'll upgrade it then. Right now I just want to get the brakes on and get improved braking. So no surprises but one thing was different, these pads come with a specific bedding in procedure. You don't get that with your normal pads from the motor factors. Right. But another job, tick off the list. Next. Finally, I wanted to get the spotlights on because we had a club event coming up that takes place at night down the country lane. So spotlights would make a huge difference. And I only had a limited amount of time to fit them. So this job had to be quick and dirty. So I just got out the drill and drilled a couple of holes in the bumper in what I thought was about the right place. And instead of putting in some heavy duty wiring via a specific relay interlocked with the main beams like I should have done, well, I, I just wired them in using the fog light power because, well, I've got to take the fog lights out because, 
Well, rules. Every sport has rules, but it's fair to say that motorsport has more than its fair share. And without going into a huge amount of detail, this rule here means that all I can have are the normal headlights of the car and two spotlights. On the way to the event, I tried out the spotlights for the first time. Yeah, maybe I should have spent a bit longer installing them. So we did the event and it went very well and the car's feeling more and more engaging and better to drive and more and more like a proper driving machine. Not a rally car yet, but you know, we're getting there. And believe me, it's a whole other video explaining why and how we're allowed to do rallying on public roads in the early evening. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. But the car, as I said, drove well. But there was the odd clunk coming from the front corner, which needed investigating. Yep, something else that needs fixing. Or maybe upgrade. Yeah, upgrade. Coilovers. Right guys, that's it for this video and okay, nothing too exciting, but I've got a bit of a backlog because I haven't done many videos on this for a while and we have been doing a fair amount to the car and we've been busy. So we do have some really fun stuff coming. And if you follow me on Instagram, details kind of down here somewhere, you'll already know some of the fun stuff that we've been doing. So check that out if you want or sit tight there will be more videos coming soon as you're still watching now please hit the thumbs up it really does help and even if you think i don't deserve it please well these guys down here the patrons they absolutely do so please give a thumbs up for them for them please right that's it for now so until next time stay hydrated